Good evening, everybody. I hope you're doing good. I apologize to a handful of you that I that, uh, had someone trying to catch everybody coming in. We ended up moving the prayer back to the prayer room, and what a great time of prayer we had back there. And some of you were here praying, but you couldn't find the rest of us, so that's, that's okay. Just so you as a praying and everything like that. And I, I'm going to do a few sermons uh, on the Holy Spirit here, and tonight uh, is, is rather basic. I'm going to just get a question for you. Uh, you, th this is uh, in the last few years you came to this church and you haven't been in a church that believes, uh, that has in the past believed that today, uh, that spiritual language, that uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, that uh, as, the, as the, the word tongues is in the Bible, which means, which means language, a tongue is a language, so that you, this is new to you. So raise your hand if this is kind of new to you. Anybody here? All right. So there are a lot of people in the morning, but they didn't come tonight, it looks like. So uh, well, I'm not really talking about that tonight. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And one of the things that we can know about the Holy Spirit, but one of our problems that we have is that so many times uh, we don't know how to connect to the power of that Spirit, the leading of the Spirit, the anointing of that Spirit. We believe about it. We have the theology down, but in our practice of living that all out, many times we miss it. We miss the ability to do so. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a few things that are practical, but also some from Scripture. But one of the things that I must tell you is that you're never going to get out of your flesh. You're going to always be in your body, okay? And so even when you're trying to be have the Holy Spirit flow through you, you're going to have an element of your humanity. So the Holy Spirit, when it flows through you in giftings, you will see things that are part of your personality, your humanity, your being. And that's why if, say, there's a, a gift of the Spirit, of a, a prophetic word or whatever, if you're in Texas, they'll say, thus saith the Lord, you know, and the person might say, God says ain't or something like that. It's not a literal thing. It's a colloquialism. It's flowing through the personality. You don't, in, it's not invalid. It's a real thing because as the Spirit works through us, He uses our, our, our humanity, our education, our language uh, patterns and uh, those types of things. So it's not that it's not God because, you know, if it was, then listen, God doesn't speak English. I mean, he speaks all languages, but the original language of his people wasn't English, right? And so, uh, so just understand that it's okay that, that we all have a mix of our personality and our humanness in that. So when a person is trying to be led of the Spirit, they may miss the mark just a little bit, but mostly be led of the Spirit. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. It's like you're, you, it's not like it's 100% all the time that the, that the connection to the voice of God by His Spirit is crystal clear and you know exactly what God's telling you all the time so you exactly do everything right, okay? And so uh, don't, don't get all rattled when someone is trying to be led of the Spirit and they, and they maybe ask you a question that they felt the Lord wanted to ask and they're like, off, Right? Because they're trying to hear God. They're working at learning what it, when is it God's voice? When, when is it I know that God is speaking to me and leading me and directing me and speaking through me? It's not, it's, 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 this doesn't happen apart from our humanity. Every one of you will struggle with, is it me? Is that really, is that me or is that really God? Are you with me? How many of you have been there? You see, you're trying to hear God. Is that me or is it really God? Well, sometimes you have to pray and ask God to, to really quicken it and strengthen it and you know and then you step out in faith to say, God, I believe I'm hearing you. I'm supposed to witness to someone or talk about something to someone or like when you pray, like, God, what should I speak on? Is it me or is it just an idea I got because I thought, well, that'd be a cool thing to preach. You got what I'm saying? Now, Way before the 1st of t January 1, 2017, I knew that I would, sometime this year, one of the things that I wanted to do was a series on the Holy Spirit. And I'm probably going to offer some classes this on a totally different night because some of these sermons will end up on a Sunday morning. 
and, uh, and I, but I'm going to offer classes to people to come so that there's question and answer in a teaching session as opposed to in a, in a speaking session. But I just, I just want to help you to understand that. Now, one thing that you know is when Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit, he introduces the Holy Spirit as he. He's a person, not it. We sometimes get it wrong, and we think, it's he. In John 16 and 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. John 16, 13, he will guide you into truth for he will not speak of his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. He will also declare to you what is to come. And so this is not a it, this is uh, the, the third person of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God Jesus the Son, and God the Spirit. And he is just as real as Jesus. He is just as real as God the Father. And he is God on earth in you and among us. You know what I'm talking about? And some people say, well now, is he in us? Yes, he is. Is Jesus in us? By his Spirit. Is God in us? Yes, by his Spirit, Okay. And uh, so it's, it's a little bit complicated because intellectually we can't understand God fully in that he is in three persons and yet he's one. There is one God. It's like an egg. It's a poor illustration, but the best I can do. It's a shell, it's a, ye it's a ye egg yolk, and it's a white, but it's one egg. It's one God in three persons. And this is the person of God of the Holy Spirit. Now, in the Old Testament, God's spirit would move upon a person and speak through a person and God's spirit would do things, but God's spirit didn't dwell in man the way it dwells in all believers now. Every Christian has the Holy Spirit inside them, dwelling in them and striving with them towards sanctification, the work of sanctification. The Bible mentions the work of sanctification over in 1 John where it talks about the spirit of sanctification, the spirit working sanctification. That sanctification is the process of being made holy. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But, uh, but the, the Holy Spirit is what is in us right now as we're saved, we're born again by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in us and the Spirit speaks to us, guides us, convicts us, reveals truth to us, helps us pray, because we pray not only in the spirit with spirit language, but we pray in the spirit with understanding language. You see, your, even your understanding language, which for most of us is English, it should be a Holy Spirit anointed prayer, led and quickened by the Holy Spirit. And we worship by the Spirit because that's the point of, of the Holy Spirit is to exalt Jesus. It says right here, I just read, he doesn't speak of himself, but he, teach, he, he gives what God gives him and he glorifies, he's here to glorify Jesus Christ. Well, there are a few things I want to talk about, but since he's he, do you have emotion? Do you feel? Yes, you do. Let me ask you this question. Does God, does God feel? Yes, he does. And uh, he has emotion. That's why it says in the scriptures, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4, I believe it's verse 30, to grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. See, God's spirit grieves. You ever, if you love somebody and something happens to them, it causes you to grieve. When they die, you grieve. And when Jesus' spirit is in you and, and you don't pay attention and you do things against God, against Christ, the things that are unholy, the Holy Spirit, you grieve him because he's a part of your life and he grieves and he strives with you and he convicts you and he deals with you and he makes you feel miserable trying to get you to turn from that. How many of you ever experienced that? You know what I'm talking about, right? So, do, he, so he's a person that can be grieved, the person of the Holy Spirit and you have to love to be grieved and as God loves, the Spirit loves. God's Spirit loves you, he cares about you he, 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 uh, he, he yearns for, for to, to abide in you and, and be full in you and for you to walk and be led and, and for him to protect you and, and speak to you and guard you. Uh, the Holy Spirit also in, in Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, for chapter 5, it says not only don't grieve but don't quench the Spirit. How do you quench the Spirit? You quench the spirit 
by the way you live, by, you know, we, 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 we talk about quenching the Spirit so often like in a church service when the Spirit starts moving and somebody does something to quench it. That can be, but typically it's in your everyday living that the Spirit of God is moving in you t- for love and for truth, and you can quench the Spirit, or in other words, keep the Spirit from being effective in your life by the words you choose, the attitudes you have, the, by unforgiveness, by sinful thoughts, by sinful deeds, by the people you run with. You can, you can quench the Spirit. The Spirit of God You need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit and be mindful of the Spirit and Spirit-minded and Holy Spirit-minded because that's God on earth. I started to tell you that in the Old Testament, God the Father would speak to man, but the Spirit didn't dwell. The Spirit would move, but the Spirit didn't dwell within each person that was a follower of God, that was devoted to God, that were the people of God. And God's Spirit would come up on certain ones for certain feasts and certain times, and the Bible would speak of different ones being anointed. David anointed the king and so forth. And then when Jesus came, he was on earth for a short time. But Jesus said, and 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 that's not what I'm preaching on right now, but in John, it's recorded that Jesus' words, he said, it's good that I go away when he was telling his disciples after he was buried and he rose again, he walked upon earth, he ascended upon night, he said, I'm going to leave this earth. I'm not staying with you. It's good that I leave because when I leave, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you and he will convict you of sin and of righteousness, of judgment to come. He will show you all things. He will teach you. He will be in you. And it's good that I go because his Spirit is in you. Jesus would have stayed. You'd have had Jesus wherever he was. But now Jesus by his Spirit is everywhere you go. So that's a good thing. We don't want to quench the Spirit or grieve the Spirit. We want to be led by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, and, and, uh, and uh, be strong in the Spirit, and that's Jesus Christ. So Jesus speaks to us by His Spirit expressly, even as He did in latter days. He speaks to us by His Spirit, and uh, he, he more or less dogs our steps, as it were. I mean, you know, He is there, and He's, not, he is gonna stay right on you, And uh, in Romans 8, verse 16, the Bible says that the Spirit that testifies with our spirit, the Holy Spirit within us, testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. You know that. And in Romans 8, it says, unless you have the Spirit in you, you are not a son of God. Some people people teach, and and I know know why they teach it, but, but this is the verse they use, and they teach that to say, unless you've been baptized in the Spirit and speak in tongues, you're not saved. Well, that's just hogwash theology. That's nowhere else in Scripture. They take this one verse that says, if you're a son of God, the Spirit dwells in you. Because they think until you speak in tongues, the Spirit doesn't dwell in you. Well, that's baloney. When you get saved, you get saved. I read it this morning by the Spirit. And the Spirit comes in. The Spirit is there. Now, it's not about about whether the Spirit is there. It's whether you walk full of the Spirit. And that's a discipline. And you have another opportunity, which is an experience. And that's a baptism of the Spirit that gives you a spirit language that helps open up all kinds of dimensions and gives gives the ability to pray in a language you don't know how to pray and worship in ways you don't know how to worship otherwise. And, and, uh, and it's a powerful thing that, that uh, like a miraculous healing that you go, I'll never forget that because I know it's real. We used to sing a song, oh, it's real, it's real. Oh, I know it's real. This, praise God, the doubts are settled. And I know, I know it's real. And what they're talking about is the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I know it's real, and I have told you the story many times because I was a skeptic. I was told one thing on this side and another thing on this side, and I was just being honest and looking for it, and I'll guarantee you that, that it's real, that the Holy Spirit comes and will, imp- will rise up within you. He's within you now, and he'll rise up and fill you up and flow out of you and give you a holy language that you can worship and pray with. And it's a real deal. It really is. It's not something you have to strive with. You just have to believe that when you open your mouth, the Holy Spirit's going to give you a language. But that's not my main point of what I'm, what I'm speaking about t- tonight. One of the things that I, I want you to know about the Holy Spirit is uh, uh, 
The Bible says he's the counselor, he's the comforter. When the, in, in Matthew, John 15, 26, when the counselor comes, the one I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me. So we know that, that he's called the counselor or the comforter. And, and so he's with us, he's doing the work of God through us. And so we want to look at a, a three simple thoughts tonight about the Holy Spirit. And the first one, that he is divine, a person of the Godhead, and that, that he is God and that he has the same attributes that God Almighty has, and that is that he is powerful. He's all-powerful. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. In Genesis 1, verse 2, it talks about the Spirit being there at creation. And it says this, and the earth was with form, without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the earth, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The NIV says, the, now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was all over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The Spirit of God hovering over the waters. And this shapeless, purposeless blob of matter tumbled through space with no direction and no observe, a, a reason that you could observe to exist. And the part of God's person, the Bible identifies as the Holy Spirit arrives and with no warning, it begins to do a wondrous thing. And the Spirit of God hovering on the waters in that original world means brooded. It brooded over just describes the action of a mother bird sitting on her nest of eggs. And so God the Holy Spirit drew life out of the chaotic earth and produced light and produced order. And the creative power of the Holy Spirit brings the physical world into existence. And, uh, uh, and, and, and God knew that the man and the woman would, would, he would create would sin and become morally corrupt and spiritually dead. And in his love and mercy, God through his spirit hovers over the lost person to bring life and peace and recreation. And that's the work of the spirit, the, the spirit that is all powerful, that had the power to create in the beginning, was there in the creation with God the Father and Jesus the Son because the Bible later talks about Jesus. There's nothing that exists except that exists by him and is held together by him. All things exist by him. Well, we know that it's by the Spirit of God too. This is a real thing. Uh, the book that uh, 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 The God I Never Knew by uh, Robert Morris, uh, at the, the pastor at Gateway Church, this is God the Spirit. That's who we're talking about. And he is all-powerful. The creator, part of creating all of the world, he was there at creation. And he is the one that takes us out of our death and sin and sinful heart and regenerates us. He's the one that does the work when the, the spirit of grace comes. In fact, it's called the spirit of grace because it's the work of the Holy Spirit, which is grace. Do you know that? In Hebrews, it talks about if you, if you uh, know what's right and wrong and you willfully go, I'll just sin because everybody sins. Here's what people are saying today in our world. Well, nobody's perfect and nobody, everybody sins and they excuse their living in sin. They excuse their pattern of sin. They excuse their willfulness in sin and, and they go because, I mean, God forgives us. He knows we're not perfect and so what? I mean, no one's perfect. We're all gonna get there because what Jesus did on the cross. In other words, it's basically universal salvation. That's what it is. All are saved because Jesus did the work and just believe in God, believe in Jesus, we're all gonna get there. Well, Hebrew writer said this. He says, you insult the quote unquote spirit of grace. You tread on the blood of Jesus when you willfully go on living in sin and claiming that you got forgiveness. No, you don't. It says you have to turn from that sin and repent and then forgiveness will enter in. Not until then. So we have an all powerful God that... Uh, was there in creation and raised up and made out of chaos something beautiful. And it's the same thing out of chaos of our life. The Holy Spirit, we're born again by the Spirit of God. The second thing about the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, is, is he's all wise. He's all knowing. He's wise. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'll turn there. If you have your Bibles, flip over there. And you already get a Bible with a little... Uh, with these little tabs in them. I love my tabs because the older I get, the slower I get, you know. Or you could just get Siri to help you, and you could just go in there and say, Siri, give me, tell me where 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 is, and they'll open right up to you. 
So here's what it says. No eye has seen, I'm going to start with verse 9. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no man has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit, look at this, searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. We've received the spirit of the world, but the spirit, we have not received rather the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they're spiritually understood or discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And why is that? Because we have the spirit of the Lord and he makes all things known to us and he reveals truth and he, show, he gives us what he has shown. He is all knowing, a knowing God, the Holy Spirit. And so he is our teacher. And uh, it's, it's, you know, you, 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 the first thing if you want to be a good teacher is not just about personality but study and having knowledge and knowing the subject. To be able to communicate the subject, you know it. Well, guess who knows the subject of God? If your spirit of man know you know your own self because your spirit knows you better than anybody else, guess what? The spirit of God knows all the things of God and the spirit of God is more than willing to speak truth and to teach us all things and lead us in the truth. That's what happens when you open this book and begin to read it. This Holy Spirit that's in us begins to illuminate our eyes and this becomes from education to truth. It gets deep. It awakens us. We see things and concepts and principles and wisdom that's, that's on the surface no one in the natural eye, like I just read, would understand. But he's all-knowing and he's willing to share it. He knows God. And so this is the point of the Holy Spirit. So we need to know how do we tap in? How do we get there? What do we do? Well, I'll talk about a few principles. In fact, number one, that he's all-powerful and that he's all-wise. So his spirit is powerful enough to help us be holy. We're separated by God. The Holy Spirit sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit saves us. The Holy Spirit changes us. He empowers us to live victorious. It's Christ in us by his spirit, and he is with us. What does that mean? That means that we can have confidence that everywhere we go, he is there. And we can, we can stop and ask him. We can hear his voice and that he's with us and that he has a, a direction for us, and that he will lead us. And if we need to say something, he will, he will be willing to show us what to say because he knows. He knows what God wants us to say. He knows all things. What a powerful thing to have the Spirit. I love that old uh, children's uh, pastor that used to do like this. He'd go, a Holy Spirit. He's here, but you can't see him. He's somewhere. And, you know, one of the things, let me tell you, where two or three are gathered together, there he is in the midst of us, it's by the Spirit of God. You see, he's among us, but he's also in us. And that's why corporate worship is important as we begin to worship God. And it says we, he inhabits the praise of his people. His Spirit shows up. God shows up. The angels show up. Everybody's here. And we sense it because his Spirit is not only in us, but among us. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. These churches that don't have the Spirit, aren't aware of the Spirit, don't roll in the Spirit, don't worship in the Spirit, don't pray in the Spirit, everything is intellectual and dead and flat and nothing. No one gets anything deep and it never changes anybody. Because without the Spirit, you don't get changed. You get that. The Word becomes so flat and just so educational and so life, not life-changing. But God's Spirit's a life-changing God and he, he uses His Word to bring it alive. You know the word rhema, Bible college rhema? The word of God made alive by spirit. That's what that means, rhema. The rhema word made alive by his spirit. And the last thing I want to talk about uh, is that uh, he's all wise, is, is, uh, is he is uh, 
also present everywhere. And, and I'm just getting to that. Psalm 139. Turn to Psalm 139. This is one of my favorite passages right here. How many know it right off the top? Right when I said that, you know exactly what it's going to say. Anybody? You ought to know this. Psalm 139 is, is, is a beautiful, beautiful passage about the Holy Spirit. Psalm 139, starting in verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Huh. Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even, if, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. <laughs> Isn't that something? Where can I go from the Spirit? Let me tell you what. You're a child of God, and wherever you are, whatever you're going through, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you, and you have access to all of his power, all of his knowledge, all the time. When you walk into a bank, when you get out of the car at a bank, at the parking lot, there are surveillance ca cameras on you. You start walking up there, they're recording you. You walk in, they're recording you. You go to the toilet, I don't know if they're recording you. <laughs> the bank toilet. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I doubt it, but I don't know that for certain. I'm sure they got it what, going in and got it coming out when you go in there and come out and see what you're taking in there. But uh, the thing of it is, with, with God's Spirit, He's everywhere. He's present. He's constantly recording you. <laughs> He's got His eye on you. His eye uh, is on you. His eye is on the sparrow. Remember the song? Erica sings so beautiful. And he's watching over you. He's watching over you, and he cares about you. And so God's children, we are constantly within the caring, loving circle of God's concern with all of his power and his spirit that brooded over the, the, the depths of the waters in creation is brooding over you and is in you. And, and as his children, he's there and he is looking for you. He's, he's talking with you. He's dealing with you. And you can't enjoy sin. You're a child of God. You will be miserable because the Holy Spirit will just pound on you, convict you, make you feel miserable, wake you up at night. You just can't get away from him. You can't do it. Holy Spirit's after you constantly. And so uh, God never stops pursuing his children. Whatever the wayward running may take them, he's the like the loving shepherd walking through the lonely, dangerous night in search of that lost sheep. And when the shepherd is found, the, she the sheep is found, the shepherd takes that sheep and puts him on his shoulders and brings him home and rejoices. And I'm telling you that God loves you and his spirit is with you and he's, he is dealing with you. I mean, you know that. So, you know, let's don't quench him. Let's, 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 let's let that fire of the spirit burn in us. Let's don't quench it. When you cooperate with the spirit, you... You flame it. You cooperate with it. You let it glow. You, you let it deal. Cooperate with the Spirit. You know, don't, don't grieve the Holy Spirit because we need the Spirit moving in our lives in its fullness. And when you're stubborn and you do the things that you know God's telling you not to, that's grieving Him. Just like a parent's grieved when you keep telling your child over and over, how many times I got to tell you, please don't. But do you quit loving them? Do you quit appealing to them? No, because your hope is that eventually they will hear your voice and turn from their stupidity, right? The right. Bible says humanity a lot of times like a dog goes back to their vomit so quickly. It's too bad. We need, we need to be a people of God that's responsive, very responsive. And so, you know, uh, I, I want us to, and this is some practical things to do. This, this, is, this is practical. And that is that to be able to enter into a place of the Spirit, when we come before God, we pray and we invite the Holy Spirit into our room, into our space, into this moment. And when we read the Bible, into that moment to reveal truth, we invite the Holy Spirit, we welcome the Holy Spirit and we tune our minds to the Holy Spirit and we practice the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, okay? Because Jesus is not on earth. His Holy Spirit is in us and among us. Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father praying for you and God sits on the throne. He's in charge. 
But we have this precious Holy Spirit, God the Spirit that's with us and in us and among us. And uh, to, to, to tap into the Holy Spirit, you know, closing your eyes and shutting out the physical world because the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is, 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 is a spirit, spirit. You don't see it. You don't touch it. So you have to like block out the, the earthly things. You know, remember the song uh, that goes, uh, uh, of things I've had my fill and yet I hunger still, empty and bare. Lord, hear my prayer. Oh, more of you. And you know, things, material things, even visual things, even other people, we get to looking at them and it's hard to connect with the voice of God. It's easy to connect with the natural things on the earth, other human beings that speak to us. And God, that's why God chooses sometimes to speak by his spirit through a person to someone, okay? But God wants us to learn to hear without having to speak through a person to someone. He wants us to learn to hear him with our own ears. Are you with me? He wants you to hear God and be led of the Spirit. For the Bible says in Romans 8, the same place it says that if you're saved, that the Spirit of God dwells in you, that if you're led of the Spirit, that's proof that you're of, the, of, of, of Christ, that you're a child of God. But if you are of the flesh and mind the things of the flesh and not mind the things of the Spirit, then you are not. So we need to be mindful of the Holy Spirit, okay? I know people say, well, I, I, I can't hear God. Well, it's not audible. If you listen and you ask him, God will plant thoughts and impressions upon your thinking and make it clear, and he will teach you to learn when that's God and it's just you. Sometimes... It's by taking steps of faith and you begin to learn and practice the presence of God and learn when it's God. Some of the greatest moments is when, you know, well, like yesterday, I went down south a couple hours away, this place, I did a little wedding there for a family in our church and I and, uh, came back and uh, on, on, right when I got back, there's a guy on the side of the road and it's beginning to rain and he's got a gas can he's starting walking toward a gas station. I don't know where the gas station is. So I pulled over and said, hey, you need a ride? He goes, oh, that'd be great. So he jumped in. Well, guess what? It was a Holy Spirit moment. That guy ran out of gas so I could talk to him. And you know what? He even said he knew that. But I could have just went on my way because I have done that. I'm, I usually will help someone, but if I'm in a little bit of hurry, I'll just let them walk in the rain. I've done it. <laughs> I try to listen to God. Is this the time I need to make sure I take, it, take the extra time? to show kindness and courtesy. And, uh, and so, guys, we gotta be spirit-led people to do powerful things and miraculous things because otherwise we're just natural people with our own thoughts and our own ways and our own power and our own struggle to be good little religious people and follow the law. But the Holy Spirit has the power to cause us to be holy and to be powerful and to walk with him. And never doubt, he's got all power, he knows everything, and he's with us all the time. He's all-knowing, he's got all power, and he's ever-present. He's omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. He knows it all, and he's got it all, and he willfully, and he generously will impart it to you, right? So even when you pray, when you need help praying, the Holy Spirit will help you. Man, sometimes I go to pray, and I just go, I just, I just, I just, I just can't, in my flesh, I just can't do it. I just, i like, God help me. God help me. That's about all I got right there. God help me. Anybody like that? <laughs> right? You have a Holy Spirit prayer language. You start praying and boy, God starts helping you. Or you begin to just talk, be honest, start where you are and the Holy Spirit will show up and help you. But just try biting the Holy Spirit to help you pray because he will. Try asking the Holy Spirit to help you worship because he will help you worship. Right? We need to be Holy Spirit empowered, electrified, anointed uh, witnesses, worshipers, and prayer warriors, and we ought to have the Word of God illuminating like it's got neon lights popping off of it, just, just filling up our hearts and minds with such faith, and that's what begins to happen because even the Holy Spirit is the measure that pops the faith in us by His grace. It gives us the faith to even believe. 
Well, I want us to bow our heads, if you will, for a moment, and I want to ask you a question and close your eyes. Are you here? You say, I've, I've never had a prayer language, a Holy Spirit language, and I, I, I'm interested in that over the next few weeks. I would sure like to see God give me a prayer language where I can pray in a spirit language that the Holy Spirit gives me as I am willing to open and speak. The Holy Spirit will give me a language so that I can pray when I don't know what to pray in a language that I don't understand, but God's Spirit is praying through me. Anybody would love to have that come about for them? Yes? Anyone else? Okay, yes. I know that God can give you that. You don't need to feel second class if you haven't had that at all. Holy Spirit loves you. You're not second class, but he, he can help give you that so that you can enjoy that Holy Spirit uh, language, worship and prayer. Sing with the Spirit and sing with understanding, the Bible says. Pray in the Spirit and pray with understanding. And how many of you would like to tap into the power of Almighty God, God the Spirit, that's with you always, that knows all things, and that is, uh, that is uh, all-powerful. And uh, you, you would like to, to be able to really connect uh, in a spirit way and be spiritual in a deeper way with the Holy Spirit guiding and leading. Would you just lift your hand and say, I want that. So I want us to just stand together and, uh, and um, we will... Um, just, I would like to have us just stand together, and I just want us to just practice the presence of God, okay? And so, as a welcoming way, if you take your hands and turn your palms up and just hold like this, just like you say, hand me, I'll, I'll receive that from you. Just welcome the Holy Spirit into your heart like this and just pray with me. Father, God, your Holy Spirit, we welcome. We welcome in this place. We welcome in this place your Holy Spirit. We welcome you in our lives. We do not want to quench. We do not want to grieve. We want to acknowledge that you're all powerful. You're always with us. Your eye sees us. There's nowhere we can go from your presence, God. And we thank you for it, Lord. You know everything, and you have the answer to all the things we need, God. And we just pray, Lord, teach us by your Spirit the truth. Teach us, God, and reveal things to us, God, that would impact our life. And we invite your spirit to bring anointing to us. We invite your spirit to empower us to worship. We invite your spirit to empower us to read your word and study and have truth illuminated in a powerful way. We invite your Holy Spirit, God, right now to help us to worship not just in truth but in spirit. Just like it says in John 4, for God is spirit and they that worship must worship in spirit and truth. Lord, we shut out everyone around us. We build a closet of worship and prayer, of praise and prayer. We build a closet, a private place, even though we're among others. We ask your Holy Spirit to help us find that place to get lost in you. Come, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge Jesus, God. We know your Holy Spirit's gonna come and help us worship Jesus. You come to exalt Jesus. Exalt Jesus in us, we pray, God. We pause, Holy Spirit, and listen to your voice as you impress upon our mind your thoughts for me. Not anybody else, your thoughts to me. 